Today we're going to do this. This is a, a quite famous uh, all-round pattern designed for a sea trout on the on the coast here in Denmark and in all of Scandinavia. But I'm fairly certain that this fly will do great as as an overall streamer for for trouts anywhere in the world. It's called the raccoon. If you translate the uh, the actual word from uh, from Danish or, or Swedish or Norwegian, um, and it's it's a fly that has a bit of weight due to the uh, bead chain eyes here. But it's it's a really really good overall general pattern that can look like a, any number of small bait fish or or or, or even a shrimp or, or something. It's just something that looks like food, and uh, and and so it's it's a multiple uh, purpose imitation that just looks like food, so trout will grab it. Um, it's originally made by a guy called um, Ivan Berulfsson, who has a really great uh, YouTube channel as well. So if you haven't checked him out, then uh, please go and, and do that. Um, otherwise, now we're gonna tie the uh, raccoon. Um, um, hope you enjoy. So here goes, now we're going to tie the raccoon, uh, a pattern originally tied by uh, Ivan Berutfsson. So I have mounted my uh, my hook here, this is uh, the Arix NS122 in size 6, and uh, the thread I'm using is the Vivus GSP thread in 50 denier. So, um, for this fly we need uh, a couple of hackles, uh, three to be precise, and, uh, and then also some, uh, some different dubbings and some weight, uh, that is uh, these ball beads, ball bearings, no not ball bearings, bead chain, sorry, that's what it's called. Um, there's not gonna be, well, there is gonna be a tail, but the tail is actually gonna be the first of the hackles. So for this I'm gonna use uh, some, some grizzly hackles. There is a lot of cool, uh, great grizzly hackles out there. My two favorites are the uh, the Whiting Coquillon or the Whiting uh, American Rooster. The American Rooster has more hackles on it and more different sizes than the uh, than the Coquillon, uh, but it's also a, a, a bit more expensive uh, due to this fact. But but both of these are simply great. Ewing makes some uh, some really nice um, grizzly hackles as well. They have a cheaper uh, option that is called a, a Deceiver Patch, which also is a, is is a good option for for a fly like this. So. So um, uh, to save time, I'm gonna pick all three of my hackles um, uh, when when I start the fly. And if you're gonna tie um, a multiple of of a, of a certain pattern, it, it always pays to uh, to to make sure that you pick out all the hackles that you need for this tying section. That saves a lot of time and 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 keeps your your fly tying session um, um, uh, efficient. So. I'm gonna pick two for the uh, one for the tail, the, the the first hackle, and then two for the uh, for the for the actual hackles on the body, um, and uh, the tail one is gonna be ha have slightly longer um, fibers than the two other ones. So here here are the three hackles that we're gonna use, um, and then basically I fold this backwards and cut away uh, the tip. So I have something easy to uh, to tie down. There we go. And I'm gonna start tying this fly here just at, at the bend here. Um, we need the uh, the first hackle to be slightly longer than the others. Um, originally, this fly is tied with four hackles. Um, on the on the video tutorial or so on on Ivan Berulfsson's uh, side, but. Um, but I see a lot of his posts and a lot of pictures uh, from later on of, of this pattern uh, tied by him. It only has three hackles, so I don't think I'm straying too much from the original one by, by actually just doing three hackles. And it's, it's gonna be cheaper, it's gonna have... Uh, uh, of course a hackle more will have some effect, but I don't think it's much. So, so I'm, I'm taking the liberty to... Uh, to to tie this fly like he's doing um, at a later stage of uh, on, on his YouTube channel. But the idea and the overall principle and the overall color scheme of this pattern is of course preserved, even though there's only three hackles on here. 
I think there's something almost magical about three hackles. Um, many of the best flies that I, uh, I use for both sea trouts and salmon and, and trout in, in particular in, in general have three hackles. So for some reason these these three hackles just seems to have a, a kind of almost mythical uh, attraction to trout and salmon. So with this first hackle uh, done, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, gonna make the body and uh, and for this on the original pattern there is used seals fur but but seals fur dubbing is harder and harder to come by so I'm gonna use uh, an alternative uh, and and for this I use the uh, the uh, the red um, Samo Supreme dubbing. Uh, the Samo Supreme dubbing is 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 one of my my favorite go-to dubbings. It, it it's it's just great and easy to use and it, it it has a bit of flesh in there so it, it just it just really looks well both um, in the water and in the vice so for this I'm just gonna tie some dubbing here I just you know applied it loosely to the thread by applying some some pressure with my with my with my fingers here and what's important to to note here is that you do not want this to be as long as half of the body. You want it to be slightly less than half of the uh, of the actual hook shank, because um, if it's half of the hook shank, then the bead here, the uh, the, uh, the the chain eyes here are gonna. They're also gonna take up some space, and then you will you will uh, screw up the actual tapering and, and the look of this fly. So it's gonna be slightly less than half. Then I take my uh, my ball bearings, my my bead chain here. And I tie this underneath the hook. And I do this to have the weight distribution correct, so this fly will not fish upside down in the water. And, and I've just added some tying thread here to, to fasten it by tying some, some eight turns here. But in order to make this stick in place, I'm gonna take some, uh, some sabbag up here with the brush, and then I'm gonna brush some of the sabre gap onto my tying thread just a small amount but but this will this will help uh, secure my turns here with the tying thread and will will apply some uv some some uh, some super glue some sabre gap where it's needed when this is done i also take some turns where i tie underneath both eyes because this will tighten up my loop tighten up my uh, my eight turns and making this fly even more durable and keeping my eyes aligned and in place and before the uh, the super glue sets i'm just going to look at the fly here and see okay my eyes have to be there to be uh, correctly aligned then i move my tying thread up in front of the eyes and then i take the next tackle so again this as i, as I said again this is slightly slightly shorter than the uh, than the first tackle it's still a fairly long hackle compared to the hook size, but it's it's slightly slightly shorter than the uh, the tail hackle, and um, this is gonna be quite a shaggy looking fly because as soon as I turn this and when I when I tie this down uh, in the in the right angle and 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 apply some tying thread to uh, to this hackle, because of the eyes, the placement of the eyes here, this is gonna look a bit ragged and a bit shaggy because uh, some of the fibers here are gonna be forced to stand uh, quite a lot out due to the uh, due to the uh, due to the eyes. So securing the hackle with my tying thread, cutting away all the hackle that I do not need folding all of this backwards and then tying on top of it. Um, there we go. This will cover up the gap of the dubbing. Uh, you will, you will, it will be hard to see that you actually have only tying thread underneath the eyes. You can, of course, cover this gap with a bit of dubbing as well, if, 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 if that's what you want. But um, on the original pattern, this is not done. So this is how it's supposed to be. Now, for the front part of the of the body, uh, we need to uh, to to use some dubbing that is as close to natural uh, seal to, to to seal spur in natural uh, in the, in its natural colors, and uh, and the SLF uh, that's called natural seal um, is of course 
as close an approximation as you can get and uh, and the texture of this dubbing also comes relatively close to uh, to, uh, to to seal fur dubbing so so this is the uh, this is the color and uh, and the dubbing we're going to use for the last dubbing part of of the fly here so again just mangle some of the dubbing on here you could use a, a dubbing loop but but for for speed and for for a, a small portion of body like this um, then then I prefer to simply just you know mangle it on there and I'm gonna make the front part of the body here that was a bit too much dubbing at one go so I just removed a bit see I've cut myself on one of the hooks Sorry about that. There we go, just a small amount more of dubbing to get the composition and the tapering right for this. There we go. And this front part should taper down, so it's 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 it should be a bit tapering out towards the eye. Then we take the last of the hackles. And basically just turn that and, and we're very close to done. Oh, there we go. I cut that too close. I should have should have kept more of the hackle. Then it would have been easier to cut away clean. There we go. And then I'm gonna turn my hackle here. Again, depending on how bulky and how um how um how shaggy you want this to look you can you can variate the number of turns that you you, you you tie with the hackle here I think maybe four turns it also depends on on what type of feather you're using um, how dense the actual feather feather is um, but I think four turns for this with with this hackle here was was the right way to go I think I had about the same on the uh, on the middle hackle I'm gonna fold everything back. Start creating a small head here, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna completely finish the fly because this fly has to have a red head as well. So I'm gonna do a whip finish with the uh, with the GSP thread. Remove that. Change the thread into a red Vivus one. Just a 10.0 or 12.0 or whatever. And then I'm gonna finish the fly with the uh, <laughs> sorry with the red thread to give the fly the red head as it should have according to the pattern. There we go. And um, this fly works great in also in a size uh, in a size eight and then in a size four. Um, so, so you can of course variate the uh, the pattern here, depending on on what's what 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 type of fishing and and what type of weather you're you're fishing. Just gonna and there you have it. Just gonna apply a really really small amount of saber gap here to. To finish the fly off, you could use varnish as well. But there you go. The raccoon. So, good. So there it is, the uh, the finished raccoon. Um, as always, you can find the full and complete material kit to this fly and any other flies you'll find here on YouTube uh, at my webshop. It's called Nordic Anglers. We ship worldwide. And uh, it would mean a lot to me if you would uh, take a look at, at our big selection and see if there's anything you need from there. Um, that's basically how we can keep this YouTube channel going, is, is by having the shop that, that, that basically support all of the other stuff that we do. So um, you can, as I said, find the full material kit to this and any other fly on this YouTube channel. Um, 
Otherwise, I wish you... Oh, oh, and of course, if you haven't done so, please subscribe to the channel as well. That would mean a lot. Um, otherwise, I just wish you the best of luck out on the water. Um, and uh, thank you a lot for watching.